from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Automation Anywhere, Imagine. Brought to you by Automation Anywhere. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Midtown Manhattan at Automation Anywhere Imagine 2019. We were here last year, it's about 1,500 people. We're excited to be back. The RPA space is really, really hot as evidenced by tons of investment coming into it and we're excited to have the CEO fresh off the keynote, but here Shutka, the CEO and co-founder of Automation Anywhere. Mayor, great to see you and great job on the keynote. Thank you, good to see you too. Yeah, so I want to jump into some of the top level themes that, that, that you outlined I think are so important and one of them was kind of this whole concept of democratization of automation. Right. We hear about it in big data, we hear about it citizen developers and you guys are taking it really into the automation space and you had three three things that are really important. One, it has to work for anyone. Right. Uh, it's got to be available anywhere, yeah. which implies on anything. Yeah. Um, and it has to be available to any company, regardless of size. Right. And it sounds like you know, you've really baked those concepts into a lot of the announcements that you've had today and kind of where you're taking the company. So I wonder if you can dive a little bit deeper as to why those are kind of guiding principles. Absolutely. The, I think what guides us there is that we, we believe that the, the, the power of technology lies when it impacts the lives of millions of people and makes them better. So if you start with that premise, how do you make, the, how, how do you make that possible? Now when you look at any technology that has affected and made millions of lives better, they had these three characteristics in common. Take an example of a personal computer or an internet. It was available to anyone, for any kinds of people, uh, any profile of people. It was available anywhere in any device. And it was available for any size company. So we have seen this, this play out few times in our lifetime. So it is, we have learned from that that if uh, our mission is to make a power of RPA and AI reach millions of people and make their lives better. Right. So if, if that's the mission, then we have to make this possible for anyone, for, a, for anywhere, and, and for any size company. And a big piece of that was the announcement of the community version, which is free. Right. Um, so I'm sure there were some interesting discussions about you know moving to a freemium model and actually giving the software free for people that qualify. I wonder if you can talk about those discussions and clearly there's a bigger picture that you're focused on sure. versus just the revenue so for we, one or two small customers. Right, so we, we uh, our community edition is free for small businesses, student and developers, individual developers. And the reason why we did this is for two reasons. One is uh, we believe the students are our future and they will take this uh, technology forward and we need more and more people with digital skills. So it seemed like the right right place to invest and enable them with the uh, with the next set of technologies. Uh, the reason to make it available free for developers is we believe that today about 95% of processes that we automate are the processes that we do manually today. But that is changing very fast. In three to five years, 30% of things that we will automate will be the things that are not part of our lives today. It is things that we don't don't know yet, right? Right. right. And that, that happens every time. The way we use phones and everything, we, nobody could have predicted this. Right. So we know that will happen like it happened in internet and other evolution. It will happen in our space as well. And developers are an amazing asset. They, they are the one who will discover, uh, find these new ways that, the, the, that none of us know about. Right. And they will discover, they will create this new feature, new future in front of our eyes. So it made sense to empower developers. And especially developers are very picky. They, they want the best software available. They won't settle for anything less. And because we had the complete intelligent digital workforce platform that include uh, the best RPA, artificial intelligence, and analytics. <coughs> we thought that's a great, the, the, uh, it, it, uh, they, they would love the power of this combined platform that is not available anywhere else. And true to the cause, as soon as we announced it, we had an amazing success. The, the requests are pouring in from our 120 countries worldwide, and the adoption has been phenomenal. And you mentioned that on stage on, a couple, uh, on the keynote that <coughs> there's some examples out there where people are not doing automating of processes that they already did, but are really starting to get creative in the uses of this tool. And I think we see it over and over. As you said, people miss, people miss 
you know, the, the hyper curve. They, they, you know, they, it's hard to see the future, and they, it's hard to apply kind of what we're doing today to what we're going to be doing in the future because we really don't know. That's right. I think sometimes I, I describe this way to people that <coughs> when the new technology comes, people think that new technology is the train and the world is the station. So the station remains where it is and the train moves on, right? That's not how real world is. The real world is, the world is a train itself that's moving forward and technology <laughs> is one of the, you can say it's the first... Uh, uh, the locomotive. The first locomotive of it or one of the pieces right, in it. Right, right. But the whole world is moving to right. it as well. So we, all, we often, many of us get this wrong that we make a mistake to think that the, how will this new technology fill in a stationary world where that's not the case, the right. world is moving. Right, it's moving. The other thing you brought up I thought was, was, was pretty interesting is that this is not this is not to displace workers. It's mm -hmm. to enable workers to do better. And I couldn't help but think of, just like my PC helps me do my job better, the internet helps me do my job better, my phone and my ERP system all help me do mm -hmm. my job better. So, of course, why wouldn't I want a powered AI assistant to help me do my job better? That's absolutely true. I, look, I have a uh, very extraordinary privilege of seeing this transformation through the eyes of thousands of people who use our platform every day. And I've visited about, of the 2,800 plus customers we have, I have visited hundreds of them and talked to thousands of people on the ground who use this technology. And there is not a single one of them who would go back. And I invariably ask that, you know, after a few discussions I would say, would you ever consider going back? And the answer is universal across any country, any vertical, People do not want to go back to, why would you? Why would you do, do a robotic job? Right, right. Um, and so it is, it is more clear than ever before that this, this uh, transformation is certainly not about us, certainly not about bots. It is about empowering people so that they are more productive unlike any other time in human history. Right. Uh, taking a step further, as you said, compared to the where PC brought us. Right. You used to, know, I mean, again, I could go on on your uh, keynote all day long. Another great thing you brought up, which was just, was was crushing. Mm -hmm. I think you said that 4%, 4% of people have jobs that yeah. need some degree of creativity. It's that nice. is horrible. Is it not? <laughs> is it not? <laughs> that is horrible. Yeah. And again, to personalize it and talk about, you talked about your, you know, your kids and, you know, this world that they're going to be coming into, why would we want to put them into a robotic job? Right, so, as I, as I, so the, the, the data shows that uh, the only 4% of U.S. jobs require medium creativity. And as a parent, that is, I am troubled by it. Because we, like, like all parents, we tell our children they can do anything. What do we mean by they can do anything? If they get one of those 4% jobs, there's still a medium level of creativity. So probably we hope they get 0.1% of those jobs that require full human capacity. Yeah? Right, right. That's, that's not anything they can do. We don't, they don't have as many opportunities that they should have. And I think we, 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 we need to create a better world with more opportunities for our children. Right. I, I would settle at 40%, but 4% is an exception. <laughs> so a little bit about the business, because yeah. the deeper stuff I think is more interesting, but the business is doing yeah. well. Again, since we last met, you had this huge A round. I think someone said the largest A round ever, you put over half a billion dollars into the bank. A, wh what does that you know kind of show in terms of validation from the marketplace for the opportunities you guys are addressing? And then B, you know that with with great uh, with great resources comes great responsibility. You know, so what are you doing next? Kind of you, as you look into 2019, what are some of your top priorities? So uh, we've been very fortunate to get the as you mentioned about our 550 million in our Series A round, and it is uh, if not the largest, one of the largest Series A round ever. I think it shows, first of all, it's a validation of our market leadership and the growth of the category both. Uh, uh, the, we, we, are, uh, we, we, we continue to invest heavily in three areas. First is our R&D investment continues to grow, uh, especially in AI and making RPA accessible to millions. So those investments continue. There is a glo uh, we are significantly investing in the global expansion uh, uh, across now we have offices in about 30, 35 countries worldwide. 
And the third is we will carefully look at uh, acquiring maybe new technologies and new acquisitions to make our digital labor platform more complete and uh, offer customers more seamless solutions. Right. So last question before I let you go, I know they got you used to slam back to back to back all day. It's really about the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of the partner ecosystem, you've got obviously a bunch of system integrators here, which validates that they see a huge opportunity. But talk about, you know, kind of how you're developing the ecosystem to extend the reach beyond just the people that work at sure. automation anyway. So we have two important pillars to our ecosystem. We have uh, SI system integrators. We have about 700 plus partners who provide invaluable experience in various domains uh, all over the world. And um, so many of them provide the bots in the bot store. There are domain specific, process specific, related to tax and audit and finance and accounting and supply chain and oil and gas and telcos across all industries. Right. So they, 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 they bridge the gap between technology and the customer specific, domain specific process. So that's a one, one important pillar. The second important pillar is the uh, is the software uh, companies. So we have a great deal of partnerships with many of them. Uh, for example, we have a continued partnership with IBM uh, with their digital business automation group. We uh, recently announced partnership with Workday that is uh, very important to us. It it it, uh, it it has an enormous potential of how when you combine best in class. Uh, HR and cloud finance with best in class intelligent digital workforce. The possibility possibilities of value creation is enormous. Uh, we today announced our partnership with Oracle and uh, we extended our partnership with Microsoft on multiple fronts and there are many more uh, as well. So right. there are two key pillars to our creating an ecosystem. Um, again, all of this is, uh, is uh, Almost everything that we do comes down to a single mission statement, which is how do we take the power of this tech, RPA and AI to millions of people and make their life better. Great, great mission. So again, thanks for, uh, for having us. Congratulations on a great event and we look forward to, uh, to watching the next year unfold. Thank you, I look forward to it. <laughs> All right, Thank he's you. here, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Automation Anywhere Imagine 2019 in Midtown Manhattan. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.